graphing trig functions. Here we have a couple of sinusoids uh, shown in this diagram. First of all, trig functions can only be applied to angles. Please don't take the trig function of something that isn't an angle. Um, in applied math, our angles are usually uh, denoted by big letters. Exceptions include textbooks and calculators. The angle theta on the variable key of your calculator is not for trig functions. It's for polar coordinates. Um, so trig functions on a calculator are expressed using x as an angle. Confusing? Somewhat, but not too bad. If you remember the full, first bullet above, text uses x as an angle until section 5.8. This does not apply to you. Sign function graphs. Um, if you go to this website, it provides a nice app, interactive applet. Um, so you can take a look at that. Here's how you would use that sign applet. And in using the sine function applet, we have learned some new terms. First of all, amplitude. Coefficient preceding the sine trig function, expanding or contracting the range of the function. So we can get something bigger than one. Or less than one. The period is the angle through which the function repeats itself once. And the phase shift. If there is one, it shifts along the angle axis by an additional term the argument of the function. That means an additional angle. Remember from college algebra we can shift any function f of x f up by adding a number d to the x side of the equation or subtracting it from the y side. Uh, adding a term d to the y side or subtracting it from the x side shifts the entire function down by d. We can shift any function to the right, c, by subtracting c from x, wherever x is used in the function. We call this transforming a function. If you haven't had this in algebra, I would suggest that you go online and see if you can find something useful. Here's how we transform a function. Phase shift. Here are some notes on phase shift. Um, we may or may not encounter phase shift, I think, in, I think I know, in advanced ACDC, but you can use this for a reference or you can, uh, you can go online and find some more information about phase shift. And maybe it's a little more elaborate and detailed than what I've given you here. This is very important. Frequency and period of a repetitive function, sinusoidal functions of time. If we have a function a equals sine bx, since a is a constant number, it multiplies the value of sine bx by a. Since the range of sine bx is always minus 1 to uh, plus 1, the new range is minus a to plus a, so amplitude a. The argument of sine bx, um, bx is always an angle, usually expressed in radians. If b equals 1, we know that the function repeats itself as x reaches integer multiples of 2 pi. The period in this case is always 2 pi. If b is not 1, but some other number, the argument is the angle bx, and the period is 2 pi over b. Increasing b reduces the period. Decreasing b increases the period. The duration of a poor portion of a larger amount of time is often referred to as a period. In science, a period is used more explicitly to note, denote the duration of a cyclic, cyclical phenomenon. In mathematics, the word period is used to describe the time to complete one cycle of a cyclical function. Note the importance of time here, especially in naturally occurring cycles. A pendulum is a good example. The period of a pendulum depends only on the length of the pendulum on the plan and the planet on which it is swinging. We use the letter Greek, uh, the Greek letter tau, and it's a capital ta T in English to note a period of time. Frequency is a measure of how often an event occurs. Most of us eat three meals per day. This is a frequency. The clock ticks at 60 ticks per minute. 
For sinusoids, we might say the cycle of the sinusoid occurs once each period, and the frequency is the number of cycles per standard unit of time. Many sinusoids in nature have periods much less than one second. Things very, happen very fast or very slowly in nature. In the past, frequency has often been measured as cycles per second. This measure was placed about 50 years ago with the unit hertz. One hertz is equal to one cycle per second. Frequency and period are direct reciprocals of one another. A period of 0.01 seconds for a cycle would correspond to 100 cycles per second or 100 hertz. Everywhere in North America, electrical power is supplied as an alternating sinusoidal voltage with various standard amplitudes and a single standard frequency. This is a good example to use because it is used everywhere here for more than 100 years. Not true in Europe, there they use 50 cycles. Most home appliances, including your cell phone charger, require a voltage versus time function as follows. V turns out to be 201 sine 2 pi 60 t where 201 is the peak voltage amplitude and 60 is the cycle frequency F in cycles per second or hertz. Since T is time, it always increases and is always positive in our universe. Note that when T equals one second, the argument of the sine function is 120 pi, indicate, indicative of having completed, since T equals zero, a total of 60 cycles or 60 complete periods. We could write this equation in terms of the period instead of the frequency with no effect on the result. So we could write it as V equals 201 sine 2 pi T over tau, where tau is a constant. So tau is 1 divided by 60 seconds per period. In this case, A is 201 and B is 120 pi, and T is equal to X. Try plotting it on your calculator. You may have to adjust um, your window.